Hello everybody and welcome back to He Makes Me Play. I am Marius and I am blind, I cannot see and that is why I make other people play video games for me. Today, as always, I make Vincent play Disco Elysium. Hey Vincent! How are you? <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing just fine. How are you? Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm good even though uh, infection numbers are rising. But who cares about that? That's the real world. <laughs> Which uh, we escaped from today yeah. again. We are infected by the disco illusion. Bug. Yes, exactly. Um, and b it's okay because neither of us ever leaves our home. <laughs> so well, we're, we're we safe. Plenty of fantasy worlds to go to. Yes, exactly. And um, what did we do last time, Vincent? Uh, we investigated or interrogated the Hardy Boys at length. Yes. And the gardener. Um, yes, who turned out to be some kind of law professional. Right. Uh, and w she was defending them. And I still think she's the secret leader of the gang. Uh, even though there was another kind of alpha guy. What was his name? I forget. Uh, yeah, me too. Probably something hardy. Not Justin. Anyway, we'll see. Let's get into it. Let's yeah. see what we can do. That was basically the whole last episode was just that interview. Yeah, that took a long time. Yeah. Well, it felt like progress. There you go. And we're, we're back in the whirling and yes. rags. Yes. Can we sing karaoke? I'm afraid not. Can we open the blue door? No, probably not. I mean, we can try. I think we've tried before, right? Well, uh, I mean, time progresses. We can take a quick look in the kitchen. A blue door. You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's yeah, painted okay. blue. No, there's nothing new. Yeah. No new options here. Mm, okay. Uh, we talked to the cook before, and I remember he can't speak the same language as we can. Uh, the uh, lady in the wheelchair is right next to us. She moved. Is there some indication that we should talk to her, you think? I, I think so. Just because let's she's... Let's try. See if there's anything new. I, I think her, her location change corresponds to a change in dialogue. Yes. Just a moment. Just a moment. The old woman turns back to the cafeteria manager. And there's no public phones nearby. Oh, she's got some kind of problem that maybe we can solve. <laughs> we are a police detective. We're here to solve problems. Helpers of the people or something. Yeah. Mostly we are sorry, but no. That's true. Let's see. Continue. The closest phone booth is down the coast. Sorry for the inconvenience, man. He's dripping with um, contempt. <laughs> okay, not you... quite. What is he dripping with, Vincent? He sounds <laughs> just not happy to be where he is. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I, I, find I still like him, though. Because the next sentence is, the cafeteria manager appears genuinely apologetic. Do yeah. You know? The point, yeah. well, it's trying to make it seem like he actually is apologetic to her. Yeah. While he really dislikes us. But okay, let's see what we can do to help. It's fine. I understand. Thank you anyway. I'm glad to see you again, dear. Huh. Suggestion. Medium success. The lady is distressed. Perhaps something more upbeat might cheer her up. <laughs> and we have four options. The first one, being absolutely upbeat. How are you, Lena? What's kicking? Mm. The second one, good day, ma'am. Everything all right? The third one... Sorry, ma'am. I didn't mean to eavesdrop on your conversation. Tell me how I might make it up to you. And the last one, you seem busy. I'll come back later. No, let's let's beat her up. I mean, no, that I mean, <laughs> what? That's, okay. that's, that's not even an option. <laughs> let us follow the <laughs> suggestion of suggestion. So the first number one, one yeah. yeah. Okay. Please don't trouble yourself about me, sweetie. I was just hoping to make a call, but the Whirling's phone line isn't working. I wonder why that is. <gasps> Breakthrough imminent. Oh shit! That's one. That's of right. Our... It's the jamais vu thought, right? Yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's gonna be interesting. And uh, we had an easy success. Empathy. A faint smile tells you th she appreciates the effort, hmm. but at the moment her mind is on a more serious is on more serious matters. Let's find out what that is. The union office probably has a phone, but I can't really get there. Alter the phone booth down the coast. And Gary's phone is dead too. She sighs. Did she say Gary? Uh, yeah. Does she mean guard? <coughs> I don't know. Who's Gary? 
Well, maybe we don't know. I don't remember anyone by the name of Gary. Yeah, neither do I. Maybe she's a bit old, you know. But she doesn't seem that way, though. She seems pretty fit. Yeah, also, I mean, we haven't talked to that many people around here. We have talked to plenty, but there still might be more in the yeah. living quarters, the okay. upper houses. Um, I'm thinking, can't we let her use Kim's car phone? We could. I wonder if the game also thinks that. I, w I mean, I I'm probably wrong here, but would there be a difference bet between a phone and the radio that Kim has? I mean, should be the here's the thing. We already had a phone conversation. Right, right. Because we were connected by an operator to a phone. So it's technically possible. Yeah, should be. Uh, also, why can't she get to the phone booth down the coast? Is it just because of the wheelchair? I mean, could we push her there? I really feel like being helpful. <laughs> yeah, well, first of all, we should figure out more information because that's yes. the only option we have. Okay. Um, well, there are two options. The first one asking, wait, what's wrong with the phone line? And the second one, why did you need to use the phone anyway? Uh, yeah, start with number one. Okay. The manager was vague about it. She frowns. <laughs> she sounds really upset <laughs> about his being vague. And we have an easy success in interfacing. Why would he be vague about phone problems? Yeah. This is something to look into later. Ask God, maybe. Nice. We can have another conversation <laughs> with God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and now we only have the option to ask, why did you need to use the phone anyway? I, mm -hmm. I feel like we could help her without prying into her affairs, but sure, let's do that anyway. It's okay to ask, I think. To let the young woman who's house-sitting for us know that we may be delayed. Morel, my husband, and Gary were supposed to be back on Monday night, but they're still missing and I haven't heard from them. So that's Gary. But uh, Morel? Is that the housekeeper? Uh, Morel, my husband. That's the husband? Yeah. So who's Gary? An employee of theirs? Is I that the house sitter? No, I think neither of them is the house sitter. Okay. So they, they have... We still don't know who Gary is. Yeah, but he's... We haven't met him and he's related directly to her. So yeah. he's a friend of her that is working with her husband or... Maybe the son? Traveling or something like that, yeah. She, she just assumes that we know... But okay, who cares? What's, what, what's next? Uh, we continue. I was also hoping she'd heard from Morel. Authority, medium success. You heard that? Someone's missing. Mm. There could be foul play afoot. Yes, I thought that too. And we can talk to authority by saying, I love missing person cases. Or, uh, the second option, missing persons aren't really my style. Uh, yeah, okay. The last one, why do... I have to play a rescue man. No, to me it's number one. I love it. Yes, I want to investigate. Yeah. That's right. That's authority speaking. That's right. Now, skip the foreplay. Time to dive into the dark alleys. Start shaking down the usual suspects. You know, the legwork. Yeah, some police work. I like it. And now we can talk to her again by saying either, okay, I'll buy it. Has your husband gone missing before? Or we can say... This sounds more like a side thing. I need to take care of my main thing. Then I get back to this. <laughs> that That's the option for us, I guess. <laughs> well, this is the option to, for me to leave. No, I don't want to do that. But I do have to say that the, okay, I'll bite to this old distressed lady. It sounds a bit too snarky. <laughs> yeah. Like, But okay, if that's the only way to go, then let's do it. So, has your husband gone missing before? That's just it. This isn't like him at all. He always plans his expeditions so carefully. Okay, but there are expeditions. Yes, please tell me more. Shivers, medium success. A cold breeze hisses through dense thickets of reeds. Something sweet in it. Somnolent. A damp chill goes down your spine. When you look around, you're still in the whirling and wax. But you have more important things to worry about. She glances out the window towards the bay. Why was Shivers talking about reeds? There's no reeds anywhere here. Yeah, maybe it was referring to wherever the husband is at the moment. Yeah, either that or some ha memory of Harry that gets triggered by the thought of an expedition. Oh, yeah, that could also be. Yeah, it's one of those two. 
I mean, and now she's looking outside the window. Is this the kind of biome where reeds would be in the water around the Rajavol Harbor? Or Ravoshol? We still can't figure that out. <laughs> I don't think so. I yeah. mean, maybe, but it, it Where do reeds grow anyway? I'm guessing they grow in the Pale, Vincent, which is a place I want to go to eventually. <laughs> Let's continue talking to the uh, lady, the Lena. The place we don't know anything about. Well, we know mysterious things. Right. Uh, well, we can ask, uh, what is this expedition your husband was on? Yes. Or we can ask, so your husband is some kind of scientist? Or no. the last question, um, tell me more about morale, looks, character, your relationship. I guess we can ask all of it to start with number one. Yeah. So what is this expedition your husband was on? Just some field work, sweetie. Morel is a highly trained scientist. He and his assistant, Gary, are studying an, an extremely rare species of <sighs> insects. I feel so relieved knowing who Gary is now. <laughs> his assistant. Yeah. Well, makes sense. But they should have returned by now. They were just going down the coast, across the water lock, to set a few traps. Hmm. He said they'd be back on Monday. She sighs. What could be keeping them? So wait, so this expedition, this is not like a North Pole expedition. This is an expedition down the harbor coast. Yeah. Down the waterlock. Maybe Lena doesn't get out quite so much. Yeah, I think so too. It's not really an expedition. <laughs> yeah, maybe for her mind it is. These days, for me, such things would be an expedition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go to the forest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But okay, let's continue. What else? Logic, trivial success. The water lock that was broken. Could this be it? Yeah, that's maybe why they can't come back. <laughs> Good thing we got logic. Yeah, um, and well, we have two options now. The first one being a wait option. Uh, it says, wait, who's this Gary person? Do you trust him? Or if we can wait. I think we should ask. Yeah. She smiles. Oh, sweetie, it's nothing like that. Gary says, loyal as they come. I trust him with my husband's life any day. That's what they always say. And now we only have the other option. The water lock to the other side of the coast is broken. They're probably just stuck over there. Mm -hmm. Oh my, what happened to the water lock? And we have four options. The first one being, you may not believe it, but it looks like some maniac crashed his motor carriage into it. Yeah, we should say that because that's what we figured out. Yeah. Uh, the so second option is, wouldn't you know, it's blocked by a big butter billboard. It <laughs> fell right into the water. Uh, the third one, probably just some technical problem. And the fourth one, I really don't know. That's interesting. It keeps going down with the <laughs> yeah. level of information you can uh -huh. give. Although number two is factually the most objective and accurate. Number one, we are already interpreting. But I think we're correct. Yeah, I think it's also... I, I feel like this is where... Um, the game shows us quite clearly how it works because uh, the options three and four should al would always be there. Yeah. Number two would only be there if we had actually checked the waterlock. Yeah. The I think you're right. First one is if we have actually investigated it. Yeah. I d I d I did. I am under the impression that the the first option is always the the one that is most coveted or mo mm -hmm. most hard to come by. If at all. So in this case, I vote we take it. Let's go. Five XP gained. Hey. Oh, sweetie. If it weren't for you, I'd be looking forward to another sleepless night. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart. She turns to the lieutenant. Thank you both. You're welcome, ma'am, says Kim. And nice. That was an easy case to crack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, she turns back to you. I hate to ask, but... If your investigation takes you to the other side of the coast, please do keep an eye out for my husband. Of course. In an empire, medium of success. This will surely lead to a cryptozoological mystery with that extremely rare insect. Okay. I think, yeah, it's correct. And Lena continues. And if you see him, let him know Lena is waiting for him here at the Whirling. He gets so tangled up in his work that he may not know the water lock's been repaired and it's cold out there. Mm. And we can either accept the task by saying, if I see him, I'll let him know where you are, uh, know you're here, when or if I get there. 
or we can reject the task by saying I've really spent too much time on this side case as it is. What well, we've spent like no time at all. <laughs> this is not. Yeah. This is hardly a side case. This is, so far, it's been a conversation. Of course, we're gonna accept the task. Of course, we are good detective. And we want XP. That too, mainly that. New task: find Morel, the cryptozoologist. And she says, "Oh, you're such a dear. Thank you, sweetie." No problem. Okay, um, this was the first option, and now we're back to the starting menu, so <laughs> oh we, we can ask, so your husband is some kind of scientist. Yeah, yeah go <laughs> ahead. We now need it for this task. We need to gather some information. Oh, I love it. We, we already know so much about her husband. She told us like six times that he's a scientist. Well, <laughs> we're just you can, I, don't, I don't know. Is he also a cryptozoologist? I don't know. I assume so. I don't think she said. I mean, she talked she, about morale. She's looking, or he's looking for an insect, right? Let's ask. Sure. Oh, yes, she says with a pinch of pride. A zoologist, a cryptozoologist, to be more precise. Also, um, I should say her name is Lena, the cryptozoologist's wife. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, and now we can ask, what is cryptozoology? And Kim says, it's a pseudoscience that attempts to legitimize research into mythology, myth mythological beasts and urban legends. Oh, I can see why Inland Empire would like this. Uh -huh. oh, <laughs> also, yeah. Kim. Oh, man. The lieutenant sounds unimpressed. Yeah, of course. He is such a scully to our mother. Uh -huh. But w we love it. <clears throat> I do love him, yeah. Um, and Lena says, that's one opinion, yes. And people are entitled to their opinions. My apologies, ma'am. I did not mean to undermine your hobby. <laughs> but it's if you call it a <laughs> hobby, you're kind of doing exactly that yeah. again. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, it's not a hobby, dear. It's a subfield of zoology, one special specializing in animal species that are so exceedingly rare that many assume them to be extinct or even fictitious. Searching for such species, called cryptides, is difficult and often thankless. And frankly, many scientists are too lazy to do it. Universities these days are rarely interested in supporting real research. Is that a real thing, cryptozoology? Sorry, something came up. <laughs> I feel like I've heard that in another context. Uh, context. Yeah, me too, but now I don't know. I mean, these days you can't trust anything. <laughs> Is it a weird conspiracy thing in our world? That's not real? Like it's a tinfoil hat science? Or is that just the proper name for the branch of science that discovered the platypus? <laughs> you no. know, that would be a cryptozoological thing, right? I think it's an actual field. Yeah. I, 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 can't from, I feel like I've heard that in a podcast. About, but maybe um, we just heard it in some kind of film or something, like xenobiology. <laughs> That's not a real thing. Or is it? Oh, okay. I'm confused. I, I remember where I heard it. Um, oh, yeah? It, it was a podcast. Uh, and it dealt with... Uh, was it stuff you should know? No, it was uh, criminal, I think. Oh, okay. And it dealt with uh, murder at Harvard, I think. And a murder at Harvard, Harvard University. Yeah, okay. like in the 40s, 50s, like okay. a while ago. And <clears throat> one of the either suspects, I think one of the suspects or one of the professors involved... Uh, was a uh, was I think the starting point for cryptozoology? Oh, okay. Maybe I'm making all this up. I don't it know. sounds like you are. <laughs> um, <but laughs> Frankly, I, I just threw the name Harvard in there because that makes me <laughs> that gives you credibility. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Did it involve some kind of rare insect? <laughs> uh, well, in that case, it was more about like mythical creatures, like the uh, Loch Ness mo monster. That, yeah, okay. That okay. Now I can. I think it makes sense because it's not platypus stuff at all. It really is made up magic shit like p paranormal psychology or something it probably has that level of credibility okay now i really remember where i heard it oh anyway, you <laughs> anyway yeah let's continue uh same podcast different episode uh <clears throat> so empathy medium success she's completely internalized her husband's struggles they are her own yeah okay i do like our little discussion because now i imagine she is like totally trusting in her husband who is a paranormal psychology quack uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and she's totally taking this seriously. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of being on the side of Kim, I guess. Hmm, yeah. 
Also, don't cross the beam once we find the insect, right? Um, That's a Ghostbusters reference. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and we can we have a white check now that we can do. Oh, nice. Um, suggestion, medium 11. And maybe you could convince her to tell you about some cool cryptoids. Should we just try it or investigate others? We do you think... Yeah. We have already a plus one from less worried about husband. Oh, okay, nice. And plus one because we have the green ape pen. Oh my god, that thing? Yeah. And oh we god. have with that an 83% chance to succeed. Let's just do it. We can probably ace it. Hopefully. Let's see. Nice. Medium success. There's really no point in manipulating anyone. She'd be only too pleased to tell you about her work. Go on and ask. So we can ask, <laughs> Hey Lena, I'd like to hear about some of the cryptides you've studied. I would, yeah. Could you just tell me about a couple of them? <clears throat> oh, I'd be delighted. Truth be told, I could really use the company too. And the lieutenant uh, says, oh, the lieutenant uh, throws you one of his looks. <laughs> one cryptide, not a couple. One. <laughs> you get one, Harry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are like a married couple. Yeah, <laughs> this won't turn into turn into some kind of cryptide extravaganza. And we can say, okay, Kim, just one little cryptide, promise. Yeah. Or we can say, cryptide extravaganza, I like the sound of that. Oh, I want to say that. The second one? Yeah. No, okay. Although I don't want to piss Kim off, but anyway. <laughs> and he says, and I don't, just one. Encyclopedia, easy success. Oh, tough choice there. Okay, because apparently we know so many cryptides. Well, not really. Because that we can ask about. No, we okay. have multiple questions, but it starts with, "What's the biggest cryptide?" And the next one is, "What's the tiniest cryptide?" Ah, but this may be a choice, Vincent. Maybe we don't get to ask all of these. I don't know. Yeah, I, I feel like we only get one. Yeah, although that I do feel like that is rare in this game to ever happen, but um, yeah, oh. it might happen here. Are there other? Um, oh yeah, we, we can ask dimensions about dimensions along which we can ask the most dangerous cryptide. Mm. Uh, we can ask if that's a cryptide on the pen she gave us. Oh, man! If there are invisible cryptides, or we can conclude. Ooh, that's a tough one, Vincent. So it's tall. Tiny, dangerous, pen, and invisible. Yeah. Crap. Invisible sounds like it's probably really useful to know. Uh, I most want to ask about the pen, though. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm a sucker like that. <laughs> Give me a weird object. Now yeah. I'm obsessed about it. It it's seems so incongruous in this game, too. Well, maybe not in this game, but it's just like, you know, we don't have any other... Uh, we probably have many objects on us. None of them are mentioned by the game. Mm -hmm. So it's weird. There also, there could be a direct relation between her and the pen. So maybe yeah. we get her favor. Let's see. So we ask, is that a cryptide on this pen you gave me? <clears throat> Isn't it just an ape, though? Well, we'll see. Yes, it's the kind green ape. <laughs> half war story, half undiscovered species in the genus Homo. And we can ask, war story? Yes, it was reported by soldiers in uh, South Safre during the war. The kind green ape would visit bunkers during the night, healing wounded soldiers with its saliva. <laughs> and we can ask, wow, with its saliva? Mm -hmm. I want to hear more. Uh, we can also ask, and there was something about an undiscovered subspecies of man. I hope we can ask both. Let's start with the saliva. Yeah. Yes, it has amazing healing qualities. Some soldiers reported growing back limbs, regaining their sight. And now we can ask about the subspecies mm -hmm. of man. Indeed there is. It's our closest relative among the cryptides. Some taxonomic family, different genus. Which is to say, the kind green ape is a species with which we share a common ancestor and that evolved parallel to our own, just like your partners. What? Yeah, that seems weirdly racist. <laughs> well, if she means Kim by that. Yeah, well, the first option is 
I knew it, Kim. You're not human. <laughs> uh, the second option is, I'm pretty sure Kim is the same species as us. To suggest otherwise is stupid. <laughs> Or the last option, ha, huh, that's why I always have to uh, t uh, take the lead. Right, Kim? Let's say number two, because, yeah. Uh, doesn't like racists. We are, well, I mean, race is not the same as species, I guess. And, uh, I mean, I think species is defined as organisms that can interbreed and have offspring that can also breed. Well, can we interbreed with Kim? Well, I, I mean, would if we were female, we could, for sure. Right? I guess so, yeah. Well. Yeah, let's, let's correct her mistake. <laughs> yeah. The lieutenant looks at you, pleasantly surprised. Oh no, I didn't mean to imply that zeolites are inferior to us. In many ways, she turns to the lieutenant, you are superior. For example, your earwax doesn't have a foul odor like ours does. And Kim says, a tremendous evolutionary advantage, I'm sure. <laughs> But perhaps we've had enough speculative biology for today? No, let's talk about your skull shape, uh, <laughs> uh, Kim, and how it's the shape of a criminal skull, actually, and uh -huh. stuff. <coughs> Some phrenology, cryptophrenology, that would be a nice <laughs> addition field. Yeah, Kim, yeah. I love that, I'm sure. Uh, but now we can ask about more cryptides. Yeah, okay. We still have the option of biggest, tiniest, most All right, I see we can do all of them. <laughs> I knew it. Well, I guess this could also be a case of this, not the, the green pen uh, Maybe, yeah. or the green ape. Now I want to ask about invisible. Okay. Uh, that's number five. Are there any invisible cryptides? The lieutenant leans in. Hey, you promised you'd only ask about one ah, cryptide. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> And now we can say, but Kim, don't you want to hear about another cryptide too? Or we can say, oh, right, okay, we can move on now for now. Mm. I, oh, and it also says in parentheses, it would be dishonorable to re renegade on the promise. Yeah, I kind of want to move on and not ask further because I want to respect Kim's request. Yeah. Maybe we get some points with him, I don't know. Well, Seems I, worth more than the crazy stories of this lady. <laughs> I yeah. mean, the ape was cool, but it kind of also went nowhere. So we do kind of have better things to do. Yeah, also, I feel like... There was something about honor points before, and I want mm. all the points, so. Yeah, how does that work? I don't know. Some parts of this game I haven't understood yet. Um, anyway, but we you know what to do, Vincent. All right, okay, we can move on for now. He nods approvingly. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And now we can ask, tell me more about morale, looks, character, all right. relationship. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Oh, dear. I'm not sure where to begin and we can start with what does your husband look like okay huh well his expression is slightly grumpy but his <laughs> eyes are always bright and curious like a small boy's and his palms are quite coarse from all the field work but he's quite gentle i have a weird picture in my mind now yeah it's, <laughs> it's just like a, a grumpy five-year-old <laughs> but as tall as a professor and then like <laughs> Little boy's sailor clo clothes. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <clears throat> But also, coarse palms, apparently. Yeah, from all the field work he does. Anyway, what came up, Vincent? Uh, empathy came up with a medium success. It's always a challenge to describe the person you know best in the world. Oh, that's an interesting observation. I guess so. Yeah. You have. You're too biased. But it's also pretty easy to start with the fundamentals instead of the palms. Like height, skin color. <sighs> oh, Vincent, you like would that. do that with your highly <laughs> analytic mind. Yeah. I couldn't do that. I would just tell people, oh, he always snores or he's grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> you, all, you can always tell by the sound of his snore. <laughs> yeah, and she's got a really nice laugh. Uh huh. And yeah, that stuff. Anyway. Uh, well, <clears throat> we can say, let's try again. If I were trying to meet him on the street, what would I look for? Yes. Oh, well, he's a bit shorter than you, but with a larger frame. And he has longish white hair, usually a bit uncombed. Oh, that's a good detail to know. Yeah, yeah. you might say wild, even. Uh, the lieutenant pulls out his notebook and begins jotting down the woman's description. Good job, Kim. 
Uh, one other thing, he'll likely have all kinds of field gear on him, even if he's not out in the reeds. You know, just in case. Okay, uh, we can also like ask a divining rod or other made-up technology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, like a dream catcher. Right. Um, and now we can ask, how long have you been married? Okay. Well, be, uh, we'll be celebrating our sixteenth anniversary this autumn. Her smile is soft. Not the most numerically sat satisfying anniversary, but I like the less obvious milestones even more somehow. Uh, I like it. It's like a um, a power of two. Yeah, it makes it special enough in my book. Very scientific, Marius. Very good. Yes. Uh, well, speaking of the power of two, uh, the next question is: How did the two of you meet? Nice, nice segue, Vincent. Thank you. I, I worked on that. <laughs> <laughs> pat each other's back. <laughs> that's what people want to see. Uh -huh. Yeah, let's ask. Via dating agency, I'm ashamed to say. I was looking to get back into the scene after recovering from my accident, and he just divorced. Hmm. Uh, we hit it off, and, well, here we are, she smiles wistfully. And then we have a easy success from reaction speed. She's skipping over some important parts. Perhaps yeah. you'll find out more later. Okay. <coughs> Don't pry. Yeah. And now we can conclude that part of the conversation with... Okay saying, I think I have all the information I need. Let's move on. Mm -hmm. And she says, I hope I've been useful. Okay. Um, we have two options left. The first one being, tell me more about this rare insect your husband is looking for. Okay. And the other one is, ah, I'd really like to hear more about cryptides, but I think we've done that for now. Well, I hope asking about the insect, which maybe relates to this case, mm -hmm. is something that Kim will permit. I hope so. Let's try. Oh, sweetie, it's fascinating, she catches herself. But I shouldn't bore you with entomological minu minute. Minutia. Minutia. The lieutenant gives you a sideways glance. Okay, he is suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> we're cheating him. Uh huh. Um, well, we, we can say no. I want to hear about the insect. Or we can say, you're right, I don't have time for insect Yeah, yeah you're right. We'll ask the husband when we meet him. Of course, dear. Okay, and that's it. Okay. Ooh, we have a white circle around our head. Is the see. thought finished? Yes, thought complete. Cool. Jim Wu, derealization. I want to hear about this. Ooh, there's one of these nice pictures again. It's like, Oh, and it's always so hard to describe. It seems like... Okay, the, the main point uh, is like a shirt collar mm -hmm. that seems to be also um, some sort of table um, because on top of it are face masks, mm. but like two dozens of them and just stacked one after the other. Okay, on top of each other? Um, no, in a circle. Actually, oh, okay. Like one inside the next one. And uh, yeah, they form a circle in that way. And then in the background, there's another mask and or another face, really. Uh, it seems... Hmm, it seems to me like it's always uh, uh, almost um, like a, a lake or some sort of uh, swamp, something where just things are poking out mm -hmm. and... Yeah, there, there's, for example, a face um, that seems about the right size to fit on the collar. Um, and uh, there are hands that are holding, holding it back or gripping it back into the sea. Um, and yeah, then, okay. Like, tentacle or maybe plant life, I'm not sure. These are your various sub-personalities that sort of emerge and mm. submerge again. And are interchangeably, you can plug them in and out of your collar, uh, which is something you become aware of in the derealized state of Jamevu. <sighs> That's so smart. Yeah. That's my take on it. Yeah, I like it. Uh, which yeah. normally you're, you're, you wear the mask and you're not aware of it because you're so in it. Still trying to figure out if these masks have different, they were like, different sorry. faces. But I think it's always the same face, but I'm not quite... Maybe, but different expressions. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. There are only like three I can really 
part we see. A little like your yeah your sub personalities. <coughs> yeah, uh, and I think wasn't there masks and faces in the other thought pictures as well? I'm not sure. Yeah, certainly. But um, these are quite clearly and not like morphing into anything. And um, I remember at least one specific thing where there was a face, but the side of it was morphing into tentacles or something mm. different. And it's your shadow side. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's no secret that this game is sort of about uh, personal identity and discovering it because you mm -hmm. are an amnesic <laughs> yeah absolutely. <laughs> and you're having fights with your unconscious and your limbic brain yeah you have so to drag your personality out of your the swamp of your soul yeah or, i don't know something has to happen uh -huh. like some integration needs to pr procure i'm not sure yeah something like that uh but we also have a text i can read yeah and other stuff uh, yeah, yeah. Other bonuses. get into it i'm curious so Thought complete, Gemma Wu, the, realiz the realization. Gemma Wu, the opposite of déjà vu. Not already seen, but never seen. Everything that should be familiar appears strange and new, like some half-forgotten day in your childhood, only now. That's the feeling you've been having. And for who knows how long. You should go and ask Joyce Messier about this. What world are we in? This is the fundamental question. Hmm. And... As a reward, we get plus one XP for every orb clicked. I'm oh, wow. Assuming that refers to the orbs around our heads. Okay. That seems yeah. pretty major. Yeah. Because, I mean, XP before from orb clicking was zero, right? Right. So. But on the other hand, one XP is not that much. No, but, I mean, orbs keep coming up, right? Yeah. And uh, the other one is all intellect learning caps raised by one. Oh, that's cool. Although, I hmm, intellect, we haven't really hit a cap, have we? Maybe No, we I don't think so. But maybe we have because we were so bad at intellect stuff. Uh, yeah, that, I think that's our problem. We just we don't really do intellect stuff. Yeah, but then, I mean, with the character we started with, the cap is probably at one. That's right, yeah. So this may be very useful. Okay, except... There cool. Uh, that Joyce thing is interesting. Did we... Uh, did the th thought originate in the Joyce conversation? Yes and no. I think it originated in the Joyce conversation, but I'm not sure if it um, was related entirely only to the Joyce conversation or if that was uh, related to us just continuously saying we don't have an opinion or something like that, mm. which could have popped up anywhere. Mm, okay, mm. I see what you mean. I don't re quite remember, but maybe we'll find Me out. Either. Yeah. Okay. So now we have four thoughts. What's our XP situation? We are at 80 out of 100. And we spent all our, our skill points, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, of course we did. Power games that we are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can also... I'm just looking at our skills. We indeed have one point in intellect. In general, so we suck at everything intellect. Mm -hmm. um, but that also means we could only invest one point in intellect stuff and now we can in invest two like visual calculus now has right one. we could raise this wonderful skill yeah or yeah encyclopedia and logic for some reason has like a ton of options like we can invest five more points in logic isn't that an intellect skill yeah but, I but, but why is it not capped i don't know hmm okay Maybe uh, we got a bonus at some point that uncaps logic specifically. Uh, yeah, probably a thought. Maybe, yeah. Uh, there might have been something like yeah. that. Yeah, Kingdom of Conscience. Learning cap oh, for logic. Oh, of course. Raised to five. There we go. Then I think, I like that thought. So maybe we should raise logic at some point. No. Um, what do we do now, Vincent? The day's still fresh. We did the Hardy Boys interview. Uh, I think Jim Wu just told us to talk to Joyce again. Yeah, I don't know if I want to do that. I think I want to do that on this day, but maybe not next. Yeah, like at the end of the day, like we did last time. We yeah. talk to Joyce before we go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I have a suggestion. Okay. Let's continue by investigating the truck drivers, one mm -hmm. of whom might be smuggling drugs. Yeah. Like right? That. We just might learn more because they have connections to the union. Mm -hmm. I mean, we still don't know how to get into the harbor. Maybe, maybe they will even smuggle us in, right? Who knows? Could be. 
Yeah. Yeah. And we talked to them before, but now we talk to them with that angle of drug smuggling and investigating for Joyce. Mm -hmm. That seems like something where we could progress. Yeah. That's a good idea. Do you have an alternative idea? Uh, I still want to investigate the backyard area. Not the one oh. with uh, the corpse, but the one behind the fence after that. Can we get there? Yeah. Because we've uh, been there before, but I feel like we've missed some things. Let's go there. Maybe maybe like the truck driver thing is better for next episode or something. Okay. Uh, also, I'm really excited about this because... Okay, I don't know how this works. What's okay. going on? The thing is... Um, do you remember how we talked about like two episodes ago um, how I was frustrated with the controls because my character would at random times either walk or run? Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember. And there was a comment that apparently Caps Lock uh, would change that to always oh. run or always walk. But in the whirling just now, he would always run. Mm. Whether I pushed the button or not. But I just left the uh, whirlings and before I try anything else, we have a, a purple button next to our head, which I want to press now because it gives us XP. Does it? Yeah. It works? Cool. In an empire. Was that? Could it be the Kolodoma Madakwa? What? That's made up words. <laughs> Koldoma Madakwa. Five words. No. That sounds like a proper name <laughs> of something. Yeah. And it continues. No, it's probably just your imagination ringing in your ear. Yeah. And we can... Well, this is nonsense. <laughs> well, we we can find out by listening more closely. Yes, please do. So we say, is it? Is there ringing? Listen more closely. There seems to be an extremely high-pitched ring. We just I'll got tinnitus. <laughs> <laughs> we turned into a dog. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, ultrasonic. Lena said it was very high pitched, right? It's like something tickles your ear. Wait, Lena? What? She didn't say anything about that? Yeah, it's, it's referring to probably information that we didn't get from asking about the insect, right? Yeah. And that's probably the name of the insect. I guess. This so. is a little bit disappointing. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, it's kind of a, a sequencing error. Uh, well, we can say wait, Kim, do you hear a high pitched noise? It's a weight option, so we should always yeah, yeah. take it. Yeah, do it. No, I don't hear the Koldo Mama Dakwa, and neither do you. Koldo Mama Dakwa. That's a cool name, actually, if you say it fast. Uh-huh. Koldo Mama Dakwa. Like it. And Inland Empire says, of course he doesn't. He's deaf. <laughs> and we can listen closely first. Yeah. There it is again. You are about to rediscover a long-lost species. Keep listening. I like your excited voice, Vincent. <laughs> it must be very close. Maybe, just maybe, it will come toward you. Physical instrument, medium success. What are you doing? You're a police officer, not a fancy ornithologist. The only birds you should be looking for are healthy women for childbearing age. Birds? What? what? Is that like a I guess term for attractive childbearing women or something? I guess so, too. But uh, also, apparently, no. we are not looking for the Koldo Mama Dakwa is not an insect. Wait, wait, now a it's bird? a bird, yeah. Maybe that was one of the other cryptides. Maybe it's the invisible one that yeah, we that's didn't true, talk yeah. about. Oh, I wish we would have. But anyway. <sighs> yeah. Um, well, we have only uh, one option now. Move your head towards the sound. Yeah. And that proceeds the dialogue. Oh, no. The sound. It's moving away. Somewhere over there. Go after it. Okay. No, too, too late. It's gone. There's no ringing anymore. Just the sound of the street. And we can listen more closely by saying, no, come back, please. Okay. Or we can... Oh, let's do it. Okay. Thought gained. Koldo Mama Dakwa. Oh, my God. <laughs> and Inland Empire says, keep your ears peeled then. If the species really has migrated to Martinez, you are sure to hear it again. Sure. It's I don't know if I want to use one of our precious thought slots on the call to Mama Darkwa, as cool as it is. Well, once we have the slot, if we choose to invest in another slot, which we could do. Um, you mean once we have a level up? Yeah, we, we could always just 
No, I, I think we have but to... But there aren't infinite slots. Are there? There mm. might be. I don't know. I mean, there are 12, I think. That you can buy in total. Uh, well, 12, including the four we already have. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, we can always also remove the Koldu Mama Darkwa thought from our thoughts. Yeah, but that also costs... Costs skill, skill point. points. You yeah. would do that once you have all the 12 filled, I guess. Yeah. But, um, well, can you look at what it does? I will. Although we have no slot free, right? Uh, we Could, don't. We couldn't but slot it if we wanted to. But we're close to a level up. Uh, interesting. The, wait, let me look at the other pictures because all the other pictures of the thoughts have, like, they are mostly uh, black and white or well, gray, really. But they have... at the center point always have something in color, like the masks in the last mm -hmm. picture. Um, and the cold in Mama Dakwa, um, the center point is a bird, as you would expect. Um, it, it's always like, uh, almost like a, a, a goose or a swan, uh -huh. like very long le uh, legs. Not legs, the... Uh, They're called legs, right? Or what do you mean? something? No, like? the part that connects the body with the head. Throat? Yes. Probably that probably has like a weird name in a bird. Yeah. Um but the neck. The neck. Sure. That is very long and it's surrounded um by its hard to say on this small display, really. Um but some weird uh either plants again or maybe metal work. Um and Everything is gray. Okay. Compared to the other ones, where because it's invisible. No, I don't know. Maybe because it's such a it's such a scientific. Well, it's not scientific, but it's about the exterior world, right? All the other thoughts mm. were kind of about ourselves. Yeah, could be. So they have color, or maybe just because it's yet to remain to be discovered. Oh, you think they only get um, color when the thought is completed? No, I mean the bird is oh, discovered. Oh, I yeah. see. Yeah, maybe. What? But there is some text to the thought and stuff, right? There is. Um, temporary research bonus, none. Research time, seven hours and ten minutes. I like that it's ten minutes. And yeah, very seven specific. Hours. Yeah. Uh, and the problem says, you heard it. The mysterious called him Mama Dakwa. You are certain that you did. Well, maybe not quite certain, but let's say you're hopeful. Because it would make you very special. To be the only human being who can hear this invisible, incorporeal bird. This animate whisper. I mean, lots of people have tinnitus. Yeah. This particle of sound. You're going to have to keep listening. Sharpen your ear. And that's it. Okay, it doesn't say what the benefits will be, but I guess they, they never do. No. All they right. never do. But well, I guess we could be a very special boy if we <laughs> <laughs> internalized this. Um, maybe we will if we have nothing better yeah. to spend the skill point on. That's exactly my. Th I mean, it could be okay, could be fun, but as long as we have um, white checks to do, that will lead to more interesting options. Yeah, I mean, eventually, even if we have white checks, I want to unlock more thought slots, uh -huh. but maybe not for Cold Mama Dakwa. Yeah. Maybe something else will come up. Um, okay, let's keep going to that courtyard. I, actually, I just realized you are correct. The thoughts just remain gray while they are unresearched or uninternalized. Oh, okay. Huh. Okay, well, good to know. Okay, uh, where were we going? We were going to the backyard. And character's moving. So that's not where the corpse is hanging, right? Uh, that's no. not the backyard you mean. Well, yes and no. It's the same area, but it's separated by a fence yeah. to the other part. And uh, how do we even get there? Through the door to the where the apartment buildings were, where the old lady was? Uh, no, we run past the bookstore. Where, by the way, there's another new character standing reading oh books. Oh God, so much to do! And then we ran down the promenade, and then to the west, uh, to the east, there are stairs, and we are up there. Actually, before we actually move on to the backyard, there's. Um, like a demolished building in front of it. Mm -hmm. And we can see the side of it. Like it, it seems to be um, like a living uh, building or like a... A living building? Like a Zerg building? 
that would be interesting. Pulsating? No, not quite a living building. Uh, a building people live in. Like an I'm apartment talking. building? Yes, exactly. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we can see the side of it, where usually people might put graffiti or posters or something. Mm -hmm. Does it have bullet holes that can give us heart attacks? No, but this is the same backyard where the bullets hold well, holes were. Okay, yeah. Uh, but it does have an interactable where a poster would be. Okay. And I don't think we have clicked on that. Let's yet. click it. Backyard wall. Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. And we have conceptualization. Impossible. 18. Why am <laughs> oh I looking God. at this wall? I, but Winston, I feel like we've done this kind of check before. Yeah, because I see we haven't actually done the check, but I see that the leaf is grayed out, out because we have already clicked it. So we saw the 18 and were afraid, Marius. Oh, uh, what, there's an indication that we have been presented with this check, but we haven't yeah. done. Okay, uh, very specific. Uh, why Why is that? <laughs> why have we not done this check? Because it's impossible. That, that, that has not stopped us in the past. Any check is possible with two sixes. I can't right? sure, yeah. Um, uh, I think we. the only reason I can come up with why we would have neglected to do this check, even though we have been presented with it, is that mm -hmm. we may have been low on health and afraid to die. <laughs> Could be, yeah. Or maybe we were low on time. I mean, I remember the last time we were Possibly. in this area, we were eventually talking to Joyce and it was already like 8 o'clock. Let's click it now. Oh. Uh, yeah, I so should also say we get a plus two because um, Cindy's artistic impulses are infectious. Okay, so maybe if we succeed, we get to uh, put some graffiti on this wall. Possibly, yeah. Um, I'm also wondering if... Okay, we have conceptualization two. I wonder, should that be higher? Do we have anything? No. I think our shirt or something did something to conceptualization. Yeah, no, we have, we have a plus one bonus from yeah. items, so we actually suck even more than I thought. Well, it's something we can level up. Although yeah. that skill hasn't really come up that much. Well, we just suck at it so much that it hasn't had a chance to come up. Mm, possibly, yeah. But let's click it with our... No, of course not. Yeah, impossible failure. Yeah, why? That's a wall, an ordinary wall. Yeah, that's a very reasonable <laughs> response. And Kim says... Uh, the what are you looking at? <laughs> the lieutenant's eyes. <laughs> Why must we stop to look at this wall every time we pass by with business to attend to? <laughs> That's a fair point because last time we actually stopped and looked at it and then left. <laughs> but I don't know, Vincent. Like, how did I, 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 in my life, I've known walls like that. Well, you just I'm no stranger look. to walls that <laughs> kind of hypnotize you. Like, do you know what I mean? Just weird corners that you keep passing and you think, huh? I mean, I haven't had that exactly with walls. I mean, certainly with paintings on walls, like, as I said, graffiti. Sure, that's easy, but that's interesting. But just a wall, I don't know. I just rem I remember weird walls, too. Just walls that don't fit the neighborhood. Walls that look like they come out of some kind of Disney castle and some kind of German village. Interesting. Yeah, I can't really say that I had that. I walls mean, that are extremely in bad taste. <laughs> okay, it feels like you have a lot to say about walls. Uh, sure. Or a lot of, a lot of Bad experiences with walls, maybe? No, not necessarily bad. Is there some trauma you want to talk about? <laughs> Show me. Trauma. On this wall, <laughs> yeah. where the <laughs> evil where touched wall touched you. you. <laughs> yeah. Let's move on. Uh-huh. Okay. So, into the backyard we go. And, okay, we talked with Kunoes, which we can do here. Um, there's also... A door, I think we tried. So you are now successfully in that backyard you wanted to go to? Yes. Okay. Um, so there are two doors we can interact with. One okay. I just tried. And it's locked? It's, it's still locked, yes. We cannot interact with the bullet hole holes anymore. But the other door we can try. Was that the old lady door? Uh, no, actually, this is... <coughs> other side. Uh, yeah, basically. Okay. Um, like the wall we just talked to is the div divider between the old lady house and this house we okay. are at now. Um, there's also someone standing on the balcony atop the door. Can we talk to that person? Yes, and there are also green circles, which I wonder if they give us XP. They're not around your head. A balcony with a view to the yard and the hanging. That's, that the might point. be a good suspect. I mean, not suspect, not really, but like... Um, uh, Witness. Yes. Uh, well, we now also have a circle around our head, but first I want to see, does that 
did give us one XP. Really? Just the greed circle? Oh man. We, They're everywhere. We're gonna be so rich in XP. Holy shit. Yeah, that's pretty cool. We're gonna go. Man, we could stuff. like in the next playthrough we could totally speed run this game if that's like the first thing we get. Yeah. I already, How did we get this? The next The Jamais vous. Yeah. Right? The, you the, just beeline to Joyce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pack your bags, we're going and, to the And boat. then <laughs> like a maniac you run around and click all the green circles. Yeah. And level your uh, that's how, yourself up to hell. Yeah. We click all, all the green circles and we collect all the bottles. All the uh, bottles. bottles. Yeah. And yeah. I love it. It's like, do you think there are, yeah, there must be speedruns of this game. What? That's a stupid question to ask nowadays. Probably. I anyway, wonder what kind of character would be the fastest. Yeah. Anyway. I want to get to talking to this person, so let's click all the circles. Well, there's, uh, that smoker up there could be a witness. Talk to him. Yeah. We, uh, we figured thanks. that out. But we kept an obvious. It gave us an XP, so I'm not really complaining. Yeah. And there's a circle next to the person on some red box. Which, can we get to that? I don't think we can. But we can talk to the person, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, smoker on the balcony. You see a young man on a balcony nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you for a while. That's a weird and off-putting phrase, nursing a cigarette. You think? I just wanted to comment. As a former smoker, I wanted to comment on that. Well, I, I feel like I've heard that before, and it doesn't seem that weird to me because it's just a different kind of smoking, right? A smoking where you don't... Uh, Does it refer to a specific way of smoking? Yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, what is that way, Vincent? Uh, just a very slow one. Mm, okay. Instead of like going out for a five-minute break to smoke a cigarette and just working through it's it. It's still... Sorry, it still seems mm. weird to me. <laughs> I was going to say it still seems Vincent to me. That's not <laughs> right. Uh, because nursing is the act of putting a baby to your breast to feed it milk, and that's just weird to compare that to a cigarette, which kills you and gives you cancer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I see your point. It's also... If I, f I still... I'm pretty sure that it's the slow way of smoking, and that's not really what a baby does when nursing. Um, I wouldn't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> also... all I'm saying is they are pretty focused when they are in the act. Um, yeah, but not every smoker is. It's more like a distraction from other distractions. But let's see. I I, I say we see mm -hmm. what this person has to say yeah. about his smoking habits. <laughs> I'm not looking for any trouble, officer. That's a new voice actor. Yeah. Uh, not looking for any trouble, officer, he says in a quiet voice. He is afraid. Despite the cold, his shirt hangs unbuttoned on his frame. Mm. And you can ask, or we can ask, uh, why are you whispering? It sounds like you are already in trouble. Or the second option, no trouble from me. I just want to know what's going on here. Or the third option, oh. too late, young man. Trouble's found out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to be nice. Say number two. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie, if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. Well, if you... Uh, don't worry, no one's looking. Uh, uh, electrochemistry, medium success. Oh, God, oh we want to smoke, of course. Mm -hmm. It's the god of cigarettes and youth. Ask him if he's got anything to Wow, spare. it's a cigarette not even just crumpled in an ashtray. It's <laughs> mana from heaven, Harry. We're not doing that. Of course not. Forget about it. Visual calculus. Easy success. Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Yeah, that is true. Well, we, we can obviously ask, hold on, can I at least have a cigarette? No, we're not doing that. Or we can say, actually, the John de Marie really needs to talk to you. Yeah. Is it really that important? Young man, someone died here. He's adjusting his shirt while saying that. <laughs> Half-Light, easy success. Like a nervous cat, he keeps stealing looks at the neighboring windows. Maybe that's a marijuana cigarette. It's, I mean... We don't even know if that's illegal in Rubbershaw, right? Yeah. yeah. We don't so. even know what's in cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, we're a very bad cop with <laughs> problems with reality. I yeah. forget. So, yeah, that just means this young man has nothing to fear from us. So we don't know the law. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. Okay. Don't yeah. know what that means in game time terms. Obviously. So let's just ask him. Uh, 
we can ask, can you tell me your name? Yeah. My name? My name is Martin Martinez. I think that's a made-up name. And where do you live, Martin? Oh, officer, I live in 123 Fake Street. Mm -hmm. A rhetoric. Medium failure. Medium we get failure? a failure? That's new. <laughs> oh, yeah. Martin Martinez. Good local name. Let's go with that. It's a fun joke. Uh, uh, and the other option is, looks like you've a good view of the whirling backyard. Whirling's okay. backyard. Can you tell me anything about the hanging? Yes. I'd even go so far as to say that the view is a little too good, my dear gendarme. <laughs> Do you have an estimate of when the body will be taken away? And Kim says, we will remove the body as soon as possible. Now, tell us, where were you last Sunday? Can you imagine that, just living in your apartment and looking out the balcony day after day? And there's a <laughs> just looking corpse, at a yeah. corpse swinging in a tree. <laughs> yeah. Really makes you doubt the security of your living situation, uh -huh. I think. It doesn't seem like a good good place to be. Slowly rotating every now and then. Yeah. Looks at you. The only <laughs> police that came was like... Trashing oh his gosh. room next door <laughs> instead of getting. <laughs> then, then the two officers go in the yard and just shoot the corpse, <laughs> like target oh practice. Yeah. Jesus Christ! Like, I, if yeah, <laughs> thinking about this, if I was this guy, I'd be nervous too and tucking my shirt uh -huh. in. I'm gonna stay up here. Yeah, <laughs> no trouble, officer. <laughs> yeah, makes a lot of sense actually. Uh huh. Oh, um, so now tell us, where were you last Sunday? Yes. <clears throat> oh, he waves lazily with a cigarette. You already asked me that, didn't you? Oh, we've been here before. Um, yeah, we we have three options. The first one being, did I? Or did you look at Kim? Or I'm pretty sure I didn't. Let's ask, did I? Like an amnesiac. <laughs> yeah. Five XP. Uh, no, not you. He gestures idly. Some more muscular type. Oh. The lieutenant takes on his little, takes out his little blue notebook and writes something down. And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? Last week? I don't know. Look, he looks around the courtyard again. Rain peppers on the windows, silts, and dead house plants. Too late to do them any good. Mm -hmm. You didn't answer the question. That's Kim speaking. What were you doing last Sunday? He sighs. I had a friend over. And we can ask, what kind of friend? It was my Sunday friend. <laughs> He's such a bad liar, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> electrochemistry. His drug dealer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, could be. Uh, electrochemistry, medium success. A Sunday friend. How intriguing. Mm -hmm. I used to have some Sunday friends, too. <laughs> They brought me marijuana cigarettes. <laughs> Authority, medium success, makes sense. Friends are nice on Sunday. You don't have to work. You can just spend time with pals, watching rugby and drinking beer. Exactly. And we can ask, what's your friend's real name? Did he see something? He doesn't reply. Gestures no with a cigarette. Under the grey sky, the neighboring windows are streaked with rain. Half-light, medium success. Someone hides behind a curtain. Those windows oh. have eyes, and those eyes are watching, spying on you three. Mm. So Martin can't speak quite mm. freely. Yeah. Maybe we should come back later, in the middle of the night, when there's no one around. Is that the game saying that, or you? No, that's me. Uh, why would you think that this is possible? Because the... Wouldn't he just be inside? I don't know if he's around, but I remember that the game tips on the loading screen told us that everybody goes to sleep at 10. Yeah, but then then we can't talk to him then, right? But he might still be out here. Well, we can certainly check, for that, sure. That's like the first I'm idea just that skeptical. I had. Yeah, no, let's do it. It's a good idea. I'm just skeptical. Yeah, yeah fair enough. I mean, I'm I'm not certain that it's working. It doesn't cost us anything to check. But we're, are we done with him? I mean... yeah. We really? Now only leave. Oh, I mean, saying, wow, okay. All right, we'll talk later. Well, all right, cool investigation. But, I mean, okay, even here, yep. there, there's but something suspicious. 
he's going on. Uh, he says, no, he won't. He takes one last rag of a cigarette before stubbing it out on the balcony. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. And we have a red check suggestion, medium 10. Convince oh, wow. him to stay. Oh, that's so interesting. It means we can't repeat it, right? Yeah. Mm. We have a 72% chance to succeed. Cool. I hope it works. There's no reason to not to do it. I mean, not really. It might... I mean, he already said that we won't be talking to him again. So I'm just thinking, if we take this and we don't succeed, is he going inside and that's it forever? Or Probably. Uh, Maybe not. We can come back at night for sure, but let's just succeed. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Let's yeah. see. Come on. Fuck off. We are... Fuck off! Terrible at this Our game. luck We're is not optimal. Terrible. I have to say. I have to c lament <clears throat> this again. Yeah, we are... We missed it by one, by the way. Okay. Well, what are you going to do? A suggestion. Medium failure. Time to bring out your secret charm. Tears and begging. <laughs> Show him your emotional side. Throw yourself before his very feet like a dog. No, no, and, that, and I don't think that's going to work now. Well, um, we, we have two options. The first one is, what do you want from me? Do you want me to cry? Huh? Or the second one, please don't go. I stopped drinking. I, I, I take the trash out. Just please don't leave me. <laughs> I want to do number two. I feel like this. Yeah, this is harkening back to his yeah. ex-girlfriend, uh -huh. wife, whatever. Maybe, yeah. And he says, trash? The young man shakes his head in confusion. And empathy, easy success. Please don't go. I even stop smoking inside. And smoke on the balcony. Listen, I really have to go. With a flick of his wrist, he sends the extinguished cigarette sailing over the rail. Electrochemistry, of course. <laughs> Medium of success. Ah, there it goes. Wasted. You could have gotten at least a few drags out of it. New task. The smoker on the balcony. Hmm. So there will be more. Hopefully. Yeah. And he's but walking I guess away. The task is just talk to this guy. Get it out of him. That was very interesting. What? Uh, once I clicked it, it says in, in the text box, good luck with the investigation. And he walks away, and then he actually walked away by throwing the cigarette over the balcony, mm -hmm. and then he walked away. And now we are zoomed in to Kim and us, standing in front of the closed door. Okay. Is this implying that Kim wants to talk about this? Well, he says he's gone. The lieutenant puts away his notebook and turns to you. And we can only say we should run after him, see where he went. Okay. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. Mm. And we can say, so we just give up? Or we can say, you're right. We probably didn't have anything important to, s to say anyway. So we just give up? <coughs> yeah, because he probably has something important to say. Yeah, otherwise he wouldn't hide it. Yeah, and Kim says, he could be a witness, him or his Sunday friend, either way. We need to look into that muscular type who's asking about our case. Yeah. Might have been someone who intimidated this young man. And others, possibly. Yeah. There has to be a way of getting inside the building. Let's go check out the door near the pier again. Once we've found the way in, we can ask around for his apartment. And now we can leave by saying, great, let's do that. All right. Okay, so the next well. stop... Is the door at the pier? Yeah, and I think we're gonna do that next time mm -hmm. on D Disco Elysium. Uh, today, uh, we at least we solved one minor case. We helped an old lady. <laughs> we yeah. took her worries away, and then we learned a lot about cryptozoology, and we actually learned some things that we didn't even talk about, <laughs> like the Coco Maladuka or something. <laughs> I forget. Yeah. And um, I, I learned how to walk or run. Yes. That's sort right. Of. The caps lock trick worked mm -hmm. so wonderfully. Yeah. Eventually. Um, thank you, Vincent, for reading to me again so wonderfully. Um, thank you, my everyone, pleasure. for watching. It is my pleasure also. Uh, if you liked it, you can hit the like button on the video. You can leave a comment. We do enjoy those quite a bit, and we always learn so much. Uh, and you can follow us on Twitter at makes underscore play. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.